Hey guys, happy Tuesday. This week I am answering a super common question about Procreate, and that's how to print your artwork from Procreate so you can match it as close as possible to what you see on screen. So this question is kind of tricky because there's a bunch of variables involved, like the type of monitor, printer, and paper that you're printing on. So to make things super simple, I'm sharing my process, what I do specifically to get the best result, as well as some tips to keep in mind when you're printing out your own artwork from Procreate. So my process involves exporting my Procreate artwork as a PSD, bringing it into Photoshop on a desktop or laptop computer, and then doing some test prints. I actually even color calibrate my monitor, so I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's hop in and get started. So I just want to start out by showing you a before and after. So this was last week's tutorial where we created a fall watercolor wreath in Procreate. I'll leave a link to this tutorial right in the video description. So you can see the before print, how everything looks pretty dull and not super exciting. And then the after is incredibly vibrant. All of our colors are really popping and coming forward. And that's the type of artwork that you would want to frame and display on a wall or sell the artwork. So that's what you can expect out of the rest of this video. So the first thing we need to do is take our Procreate artwork and get it onto our computer so we can tweak it within Photoshop. So you wanna hit the gear icon and then go to share and then select PSD. And when you export, you can either airdrop it to your computer or you can email it to yourself. So the tool I'm using to calibrate the color of my monitor is called the Data Color Spider X Pro. I love this tool because it allows me to have a more accurate impression of what colors really look like in real life versus on screen. So now what I'm seeing on screen is a very, very, very close representation of what real color looks like, tangible color when it's printed out. So this makes a huge difference, especially if you plan to sell your artwork or if you're printing something for a professional client, you'll wanna make sure your color is as accurate as possible so you can give your clients and your customers the best results possible. So I love this tool, it's super easy to use, so I'm going to give you a quick demo of how to use it if you're interested in calibrating the color on your monitor in the future. Okay, so I've opened up the PSD that I airdropped from Procreate on my iPad onto my computer. So before you can run the color calibration on your monitor, you'll have to go download some software from the Spider X Pro website so you can start running the calibration. So I've already done that, so I'm going to walk you through those steps. And I have this little icon up here, so I'm just gonna click on that and choose Launch Spider X Pro. And then I'm going to be prompted with a bunch of different things just to set up the calibration. So I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick. So I'm going to hit OK. So when you first install the software, you're going to get a prompt that's going to ask for your license key. It's right on the inside of the box. That's where your license key is. So you'll just input that and then you'll be ready to go. So right here, we're going to just make sure that your monitor has been on for half an hour, that you don't have any direct light right on your monitor and that you have, if you've reset your monitor settings recently, that you go back to the default and you want to make sure that you plug the Spider X Pro into your USB port and then you're good to go. So I'm going to hit next. So once you get here, just read through these different types of backlights and choose the one that fits you. I am on an iMac Pro and mine is a wide LED. I'm going to hit next and I want a full calibration. I am, you can see I'm on an Apple iMac and I'm going to hit next. And you can see we have a little outline of what the Spider X Pro looks like. So now I'm going to put it on top of the screen to match it up with this shape right here. Okay, so I've got my Spider X Pro right here and I'm just going to wrap it around and set it right on top of my iMac monitor and then slide it down so it fits right over the top of it. And once it's in position, I'm going to hit next. And you'll see it's going to flash a whole bunch of different colors. So this is the calibration process right now. Okay, so it's all finished. That whole process took about two minutes, which is way faster than any of the other products that I've tried this with in the past. So we're just going to hit finish right now. Sometimes you might need to adjust your brightness, but you can do that right in your settings. Okay, so I'm gonna hit finish. I've moved the Spider X Pro off of my screen, and now I can name this new color preset that it has calibrated my monitor to. And hit save. 
All right, and I'm going to hit next, and now we can see the difference, the before and after difference. So there's a bunch of different photos right here that I can preview the change with. So if I click on these peppers right here, and I hit switch, my monitor has now been calibrated, so when I hit switch, it's going to show me what it looked like before, and then we can compare it to the after now. So if I hit switch, you can see my monitor was a lot bluer before, and now it's more natural looking, and it kind of looks more yellow now. So I'm gonna hit switch. So this is the calibrated version. So this is a more accurate representation of what colors actually look like whereas my monitor before was a little more blue so you can see the back and forth right here and how the colors are changing take a look at these red peppers especially that's a quite a drastic change actually all right, so then I can hit next. We are all set to go right here, so I'm going to hit quit. And now my monitor is fully adjusted. If I want to change it back to the way it used to be before it was calibrated, I can go into my system preferences on a Mac and then just go to my displays, hit color, and you can see this is my new preset right here now, and I can switch it whenever I want to. This was the original, so we can see it's super blue. And then this is the brand new one that I named. So we're gonna leave this as the new one. So the first thing I want to do is just print this out to see what it looks like without me adjusting anything. So this is just the raw file brought into Photoshop. Nothing has been done to it. No adjustments have been made. It would be as if I was just printing straight from Procreate without doing anything else. So when I print this out, I actually want to print it directly on watercolor paper. That way I don't have to print out the watercolor paper texture. It makes more sense to just print it on watercolor paper. So the watercolor paper that I'm going to be printing it on is Canson Cold Press. It's 140 pounds but in order to use it with my printer I need to first cut it down to a letter size so I have a letter size piece of cardstock so I'm just going to line it up with my large sheet of watercolor paper and then just cut it down and then I have a sheet of paper that I can run straight through my printer so the only thing that I really need to do is turn off this paper texture layer because I'm printing it directly on watercolor paper so I don't need a watercolor paper texture as a print on top of watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna come over here and disable my paper texture layer. So I'm just going to print this out so we have an example of our before. That way, whatever changes we make, we can have a look at before and after. So I'm going to go File, Print. And for this, because I'm printing this on watercolor paper, I'm going to go into my print settings. You can see I'm using my Canon MG3620. There's a link in the video description for that. Okay, so I'm going to hit print settings. So now I need to let my printer know that it's printing on something other than regular paper. So I can do that just by toggling down right here where it says layout and choose quality and media. And since I'm printing directly on watercolor paper, I found that changing my print settings to matte photo paper works really well with my outcome for this so this is what I changed it to and my quality I upped it to almost fine this allows me to not use too much ink in the print but still get a super high quality result so I'm going to hit save and then you just want to make sure that you're putting the paper in the correct way because on one side you have your beautiful texture that you want it printed on and then on the other side it's more smooth it's the back of the paper so you just want to make sure that you're putting your paper in in the right direction so hit ok and then we can print this out Okay, so our before looks extremely muted, but it gives us an idea of what we can do now. So I know that I need more contrast. I need my darks to be a bit darker. I would like my color to be much more saturated. And I also think I can add even more yellow to my layout because this is fall themed. So I really want my oranges to pop. Right now it kind of looks like everything's a shade of red when it comes to my leaves. And by adding a little bit more yellow, those oranges will start coming through. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So over here, here in Photoshop. If you've never used Photoshop before, you can definitely follow along with this. These are really basic color adjustments and it will make a huge difference with your results. So the first thing I want to do is come over to my levels. My levels is one of my favorite adjustments. It basically makes your darks darker and your lights lighter. So just by toggling this dark node right here closer to the center, you'll notice all of my darks getting much darker. And you can see it really ups the contrast in a major way. And just that alone, you can see I'm already getting a more beautiful outcome than before for everything's really coming forward and I can bring my lights forward a little bit too but I don't really want to do that because it looks like they're washing out so I'm going to keep my white note all the way to the right and my black note is toggled a little closer to the center now I'm going to up my contrast even more just to see if that helps bring everything even further forward so I'm going to hit my brightness and contrast adjustment right here if you don't see that your adjustment palette you can get to it by going window adjustments and that's where all of them are so I don't want it to be 
any brighter because that'll start washing out my colors, but my contrast really makes my darks a lot darker in contrast to the lights. So if I up this, let's see if it makes much of a difference. Not a huge difference there. This, this actually looks like it's washing it out a little bit, so I don't wanna go too high, but if I make my colors a little bit darker, everything else will be seem a little more rich. So I actually wanna bring down my brightness by like negative five. Okay, so that's looking really good. And now I wanna saturate my colors a bit so they look even more vibrant. So you can do that by clicking on this little icon for hue and saturation. And I'm just going to up my saturation node right here until it feels comfortable. I don't want it to look so extreme that it looks unnatural. You can see what that looks like, that's kind of crazy. But if I come up to like 20, plus 20, and you can see what the before and after looks like by turning your visibility on and off right here. So you can see that that makes it much more vibrant. I really like that. And the last thing I wanted to do was just add a little bit more yellow so when I printed out my oranges really show up because right now when I printed it out the first time, they just look like a shade of red. So I can do that by coming over to my color balance right here. And I just wanna to toggle my yellows to the left. So I'm upping the amount of yellow in my layout and that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna come up to like negative 10 right here. So now we can print it out and see what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, our vibrancy is beautiful. This is what we're looking for when we apply those adjustments. And from here, if you're not happy or if you wanna make any changes, just go back, make those changes, print it out again and check it out. If you'd like to print a test area instead of printing the full outcome, you're more than welcome to do that. This didn't have a ton of color in it and it wasn't a gigantic size, so I didn't feel bad about printing out the full outcome each time because it helped me to see my artwork as a whole and sometimes that can be really helpful especially if you plan on selling your artwork you want to make sure it's coming out exactly the way you want it so you have consistency for all the buyers that you plan to sell your art to so I'm really happy with how this came out so I am all set to go I will save my PSD and now whenever I want to print it in the future everything is already saved and I've got an accurate representation of my color on screen and in print so that was how to take our artwork from Procreate, print it out, and get the best result possible. Bringing it into Photoshop is really essential in this process because there's so many little things that we can tweak, like your color balance, your contrast, your saturation. If you're able to color calibrate your monitor, that can also be a huge help. I had no idea that my monitor's color was more blue than yellow, so I was naturally leaving out a yellow color adjustment and my printed artwork would just be a little bit off and I had no idea why. So all these things together, it's all about the final outcome. So just keep in mind all of your variables, make those tweaks where needed and make sure you do some test prints and you'll be on your way. If you have any questions about printing, please leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new Procreate tutorials in the future. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. And for more Procreate and design tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.